Welcome everybody, a warm welcome also in the name of JFDs here at JFDs, JFD Brokers. Today, the 14th September 2017, 7 p.m. Um, German time, as usual for my type of webinars. Yeah, my name, by the way, is uh, Stefan Friedrichowski. And um, if you write me an email, just go directly to Stefan, uh, especially for the English ones here. Is, uh, I think it's a little bit more common. But um, if you write me in, in German, you can also name me simply Stefan. Your e you, my email address you find here um, on my first slide already, uh, s.friedrichowski, a really complicated name, I know. Uh, so at uh, jfdbrokers.com. And if you uh, don't uh, know exactly how to write that name, I can only recommend you that, that already now you can download all the slides of today's webinar uh, via the GoTo webinar uh, control panel. Um, and uh, later I will show, um, as in most cases, uh, some Excel sheets. Uh, if you have interest in those, just send an email to um, s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com and um, I will make sure that you get all this, uh, not only the slides, the Excel sheets <clears throat> as well. Yeah, um, that's for the beginning, but uh, what's the title for today or what's the topic for today? That's DAX Vola Trading Strategy. Uh, okay, you know immediately um, what I'm talking about. So uh, DAX, okay, you know, VOLA stands simply for volatility. So it has to do with both one specific underlying with uh, volatility. And you will see that we do a little bit more on that in order to create, once again, a trading strategy. But what I present you today is more basic concept. It's not only one single strategy. Um, as always, I invite everybody to, to um, go a little bit deeper here into the development of trading strategies. And what we do today is related um, to what I call class trading. Um, that sounds like a black box, but um, it's a very mighty tool. And you will see that uh, that kind of concept can be applied uh, to a lot of uh, underlyings, a lot of different concepts within trading. And um, it's very similar to what people do in totally other fields, um, like machine learning for Facebook, for Amazon. Um, all those things are based on classes, but not school classes. Uh, that's now another topic. It's a real uh, classes, groups of elements. And we can apply the, sim the same um, kind of methodology to trading. And uh, that's quite fantastic because the outcome is good as well. Okay, so that's in principle the topic for today. Um, but before we really start, two things here. One, um, of course, as always, this uh, risk disclaimer I have to show, and I think it's good that I show that. Uh, I talk here about trading strategies. Finally, when you do your uh, own trading as always, you do it on your own. And um, yeah, it simply is your own responsibility, whatever you uh, do within trading. The other one is a little bit off topic, it's simply because uh, yesterday, I mentioned it in the German webinar yesterday, because there it has been really um, direct. Um, but uh, I want to share this with you today as well, because it was really something funny. Um, when I looked here to uh, to gold, uh, so look here, not to the lines and not to the blue box. It's uh, just looking to what happened here yesterday um, around um, uh, 12 o'clock. Um, yeah, around lunchtime and later. Uh, what we look here is an M15 chart with gold. And then uh, when you count those, you see 11 uh, red candles in a row. So 11 red candles uh, in a row is uh, something like a rare event, 
But um, as you know, we always look to what we see in charts from a more mathematical point of view. So let's calculate quickly because that we can do um, direct uh, without a calculator. So 11 candles in a row it was one color means um, if we compare it with uh, random walk, random behavior, like uh, throwing a dice and uh, with only two colors, it means uh, 2 power 11 is the probability um, of uh, 1 to 2048 is uh, the probability to have exactly that kind of event. And uh, if I translate that to an M15 chart, uh, that would mean every 22 days uh, you will find uh, 11 candles in a row uh, with the same color. Um, okay, maybe you would uh, uh, state that it's not that rare, but M15 only um, every 22 days uh, is at least not that often. So it has something to say us, uh, because I would say that is uh, something like a black swan event uh, happening not that often. Um, if you look now to the chart, uh, we realize, okay, after that 11 black uh, red candles, uh, nothing spectacular happened anymore. Um, I totally agree. Um, the only thing that's uh, already from today, but uh, that was um, the two decisions, or at least one decision that was um, Great Britain uh, having no change in interest rates. Yeah, that's how no change looks like, uh, <laughs> even if the no change is expected. Uh, and funny enough, um, even the no not expected change has, a, has had a huge impact on the British pound. But anyhow, that's not the topic of today, really. But it, uh, just want to mention that a rare event uh, we saw yesterday was 11 candles uh, with same color. OK, back to our topic, DAX, um, DAX Voller Trading. So in detail, what we do today is I will introduce uh, the concept of class trading. Um, class trading means we build up groups of um, particular or of, of uh, specific things. I still call them things. Later we will see I use two indicators and you see them already here on my introductional slide uh, that we take two indicators. Uh, one is will be the EMA and the other one will be the ATR. And because of that ATR, um, the title is uh, Vola Trading here uh, today, but there's a second indicator, an EMA, and we don't take that indicator right away. Uh, we will look for the slope uh, of a specific EMA. And what we will uh, try to find out was if we find some good correlations that we can build up groups for specific trading behavior within a certain group. And those groups will be defined by um, group values for the slope of an EMA or the ATR. Think about in terms of medium, high, low, just three groups that will be enough uh, to, to start with. Um, but uh, later we can do much more things uh, with those kind of grouping. And those groups create one class and then we investigate each class individual how to trade that class and um, that will help us to find specific situations and we know exactly what to do with that situation from the history and uh, we can apply those rules we um, develop for our future trading and that is finally the Dax Voila trading uh, strategy. But let, let us be a little bit more specific here about the concept of um, class trading. All starts with a statement. And that statement, uh, I think I have made the same statement already uh, the last uh, webinar for a completely different um, concept, the walk forward methodology uh, of how to, uh, to get self-adapting 
trading strategies. And there we made the same basic statement of markets might change. And now we have markets have different faces. I think if I, you just read that sentence, uh, you, you listen to that statement, um, you would immediately agree uh, to say yes, at least all we know uh, or everybody of us knows that, for example, we have um, upwards faces, downwards faces, sidewards faces, but even the, the definition of such a face might be a little bit more complex, um, and but those faces can be defined. How? We will see. Immediately there's a consequence. If we think that markets have different faces, then of course those different faces need different trading setups. It can't be that we have one concept for all. If there are really some fundamental differences in those faces. And uh, since I use now the, the wording fundamental, that has nothing to do with fundamental analysis, like like uh, looking to the balance sheet, the sheet of um, a specific um, stock or specific company. No, with fundamental different trading setups, I mean, Maybe we need trading setup with small risk reward ratios, high risk reward ratios, stop loss levels which are far away, stop loss levels which are very tight to our opening of a, uh, to, um, of a trade. That I mean with specific trading setups in specific uh, market faces. The challenge now is simply how to identify those change, uh, those faces and that we have objective criteria how to define such a face because only if we have such criteria we can do it always and even in the future. Um, otherwise we would uh, just argue um, something but uh, that is not really well defined or only if that argumentation would follow uh, a strict rule um, setup. But we have it much easier because we can do everything mathematically and uh, then those faces are extremely well defined. It will become clear just in a few minutes. I will show one example and that's um, the, the Dux Daily and that is um, the solution for for our challenge how to to approach something like that and what we use as mentioned we use two indicators because then we have a quantitative measurement of the actual price movements price history price behavior and we use simply two things one ema the slope of the ema and the ATR. Both are quite important. Um, you immediately realize if I talk about the slope of an EMA, it might help me to say, okay, price is moving upwards. That would be a positive slope of an EMA and maybe highly positive, um, so a bigger number. So that EMA slope might help me to uh, differentiate between upwards, downwards, sidewards. But I use an additional indicator, an additional number, the ATR, because we know from history that there are faces with high volatility. Um, you can always think about uh, the financial crisis, uh, the climax of that 2008 with extremely high volatility and of course those high volatility situations faces should and could be traded differently. And therefore, I, uh, my selection here has been EMA slope and ATR. But let me remark here as well that in principle, that kind of concept can be um, based on other indicators as well. You might think about an RSI in order to have that overbought, oversold situations, for example. You might even take um, 
an ROC, uh, rate of change, momentum, something like that. All those kind of indicators uh, are in principle uh, suitable for that kind of concept in order to create our faces. But how does that look really in, um, in not own, uh, already really in numbers, but just to get a feeling about that concept? So what you have here within that chart, uh, that is uh, the DAX um, for hmm, 25 years now, uh, with the two indicators. Uh, of course, here I uh, have not really uh, used the slope of an EMA. Uh, it's an EMA um, as it is, but we can immediate with our eye think about the slope of that EMA as well. So what do we have within the chart? We have in blue um, the DAX itself. We have in red um, the EMA. And uh, I think, if I remember right, in this case, it was an EMA of uh, was a period of 200. And we have an ATR, and that um, ATR um, is uh, related here to the right-hand uh, y-axis. Um, and what you see already, I use a little bit different ATR than standard ATR in MT4. Um, I use an ATR in a percent value. Simple reason. Um, why do I not use absolute numbers like um, we have uh, for the DAX maybe an ATR of 150 points? Um, simple reason. If you look back, today DAX is uh, at around uh, 12,000 um, and um, started here below 2,000. So if I would have an absolute number of ATR, um, today, 150, at that point in time, definitely it would be something like like uh, 30 or 40 uh, points. So it would be misleading um, to have an absolute number for um, an ATR with respect to an index. Uh, same applies, for example, for gold or uh, oil. In Forex, mm, it's not that important uh, because normally all Forex um, values are around one or if uh, Japanese yen is involved, then around 100. Um, but even there, we have at least a factor of two difference um, possible. So therefore, I prefer always an ATR in a percentage value. Uh, because then we can look to longer uh, histories here as well. And maybe uh, you realize already that that chart is not um, that fresh uh, because uh, the chart ends uh, around 2016. Uh, so today we are back at 12,000 something. Um, so anyhow, the chart is um, a little bit older. I think it was November last year. Anyhow, but now Let's look whether we can derive already some conclusions directly out of the chart. Uh, in principle, we see high volatility phases that when, whenever the yellow line is uh, extremely high. So here we even reach values of um, um, five percent um, that we was before two thousand and three, and once again. Uh, that is a 2008-9 uh, UN financial crisis uh, with that, those high volatility. But you see, it was um, before that uh, we have had the same situation already. Uh, right now, volatility went a little bit up, and going down uh, as today. It's uh, still once again in that low value region here. Um, Let's first focus on those strong upwards moves of the DAX. Here we have one, here we have one, here we have one, and in the beginning we have the uh, same situation as well. So they all have in common, of course, um, an, EM, an EMA slope, which is medium or even high, so positive and um, sometimes even strong positive. Same time, if we look to the ATR in those phases, the ATR in most cases has more or less very low values. 
Um, not always, but I pick right now those cases I can identify already with a blank eye. Maybe that is not such a surprise because that is what uh, another uh, indicator or value is telling us. Uh, instead of using an ATR, you might use a so-called uh, VDUX, uh, which is a measure of the volatility as well, but um, in a little bit different way. But anyhow, from that VDUX, you might know already statements like, okay, in uh, bull markets, we have typically low volatility, low values for VDUX and vice versa. When I was a f um, VDUX or ATR goes to extremely high values, that might be something related to uh, strong down movements. Okay. And you see what we are doing here just by looking to the chart and analyzing with our blanked eye here means we create already something which I later will call classes because I differentiate everything in just three terms, in three um, ranges, low, medium, high. Or for the EMA slope, I would say strongly negative, more or less flat, and high values, high positive values. And you see, and you know automatically if I um, have two indicators with three values, three subclasses, finally I will end up in nine classes. And the question now is if we do it more mathematically, can we find specific classes for specific trading activities? And you will see the answer is yes. As we do already a little bit here with our uh, blank eye um, to see, okay, extremely high vol or high values of volatility. Maybe there's a preference for short trades. Low volatility, preference for long trades. Additionally, input we get from the EMA slope. And that's exactly what we do um, within that webinar. Let's now do it a little bit more mathematically um, in order to have really a final view on that methodology. So we use two indicators and um, EMA slope, ATR. Okay, done. We will establish three classes as I did it already verbally, um, medium, high, low. And you may think about what we are doing here to create those classes to assign specific situations to specific then later trading activities is more or less the same than uh, companies like um, Amazon or Facebook uh, are doing with us and all the information they get from us, maybe from our buying behavior or from our uh, like behavior, that we can create those classes. And they, by the way, in most cases, do a quite well job. So whenever you buy something, for example, at Amazon, then you will get, later get an email. Uh, somebody who bought or well, who has had interest in that article um, Maybe this this one here might be of interest for you as well. You realize maybe it's exactly the same we are doing now with um, with a with a stock price or an index uh, or a forex value. It's exactly the same kind of methodology. We create, we put situations, we put human into classes, and uh, we look for common behavior, common features, uh, co common buying behavior, and therefore we can create those groups. You may like it or not uh, in terms of Facebook, Amazon, and co, but um, they are not doing bad with that. What we do here is exactly the same, but our underlying are not humans, our underlying surprise of whatever underlying. But we do the same kind of methodology. 
If we want to create now those kind of classes, we have um, yeah to normalize it. Now, it I know whenever I I, I mention that sentence here, uh, you may think, "Wow, Stefan is crazy." Class separation by normalization of the distribution function <laughs> sounds crazy. Uh, it's completely simple. Um, as it, it only sounds complicated, but it's really quite simple. What uh, do we want to do? I introduced already that we want to have three classes. Okay, we have a lot of values, ATR values. If we have our 25 years back, then it will be 6,500 um, points or data inputs, close values, ATR values. And all we want to do or want um, to achieve is in our classes, low, medium, high, I simply say, okay, I want to have the same number, the same amount in every class. So I want to have 2,000 something in the low class, 2,000 something in the medium class, and 2,000 uh, something in the high class. Um, this And something is 500 divided by 3. Um, okay, so that is nothing else than a normalization of the distribution function. We could really create the distribution function, but then still we have to separate. And one way of doing that separation is that normalization process. As there might be other things like we go for the maximum value, we go for the minimum value, and then we have um, three sections uh, simply by dividing them. Would be something we could do as well. I have decided for normalization. But anyhow, uh, that's meant with uh, normalization of distribution function. It sounds good. Really crazy. But finally, what does it mean? We have three subclasses for each indicator. And that means finally, we have no nine real classes. And those nine classes will be investigated um, finally. Looking back to trading, that might even be classes like don't trade. So be flat, be um, outside of the market. And we, we all know that uh, there are times when it's better to stay outside. So that might be an outcome of this analysis as well to say don't trade in this situation. So what kind of outcome I want to achieve? It's something like that potential matrix. Uh, in this case, the ma matrix here is not right. It just should illustrate what might be a first outcome of what we want to achieve. You know, we have those three classes slope, three classes ATR, and then an outcome might be okay if the volatility is high and the slope of the EMA is low, we enter a short trade which would not be in line with what I have done uh, within the chart. Um, but anyhow, if we get something like that, that um, system with flat, no trade, green, go long, red, go short. And if you can prove that this has already um, a probability advantage, then it will help us in our trading activities quite well. We can either use it direct and trade it strict as it is. Long means long. And long later will mean market opens. We open or trade long, market closes, trade is closed. That would be, for example, one rule. But there might be some other what still would, would help us to have that information at what point in the matrix and then later uh, in the specific situation, what kind of direction or no trade we should prefer uh, will help us a lot. So that's something we have in mind, what we would like to create. Okay, let's do it really practically. So let's get started here first. So what we have here is... Um, and let me enlarge it a little bit here. So 
Um, we start with um, our prices, meaning uh, DAX value starting in 25 years ago, uh, open, high, low, close. And um, yeah, now it's uh, up to us to create those two indicator values. So first, what we have to calculate is the ATR value. And just that you get a feeling of how is, that is done, more or less the ATR is um, an average of uh, high minus uh, minus uh, low. If you would have no gaps within our charts, uh, then it would be already exact, but uh, gaps make it a little bit more complicated. Therefore, you see a little bit more uh, input here um, in the formula. But anyhow, more or less, it's just a measure of maximum minus minimum. And then we do it percentage-wise, as already discussed, uh, and the reason why. And finally, in my case, therefore, I have uh, fixed numbers first and only after 120 candles, I can really calculate that number um, finally um, because I want to have the average of 120 candles and that is simply done by averaging those true ranges in percent. So that's the definition of average true range. And then finally, um, we have that, that, that period, uh, which indicates us how many candles are averaged. The other thing that we, we have here in, in EMA um, yeah, is straightforward, how to calculate that. Uh, you see the formula. And uh, as I mentioned already, you can have those Excel sheets as well. And then we want to create um, the slope of the EMA, um, which is done here. Um, and what I do here is um, something that I uh, average that as well, um, because uh, otherwise my picture here uh, would be not uh, that, uh, that would be too noisy. So you see now already in that picture that uh, we get a new line here and that new line um, is the green one. I have rescaled that uh, line a little bit in order to, to have it here. Uh, on the same scale uh, like uh, the ATR. You see the reason why I use an additional average of 10. Um, already that uh, green line is still quite noisy. But now it comes to, we have here now the, the values. We have all the values, uh, slopes and the ATR values. And now we want to do that class separation. But before doing that, we have to normalize uh, what we have here. And how this is done, let me let me show you uh, directly. So I will take all my my um, my values for ATR um, and copy them in to a new sheet here. But now I insert them um, just by value. And still, you know why we have always the same um, at the very beginning. That's uh, for the first 120 candles. Uh, I have a fixed number here uh, because I'm not able to average um, at the very beginning of the chart. So what we can do here, of course, we can plot those values. And then we get uh, more or less the same picture we have had in my chart uh, previously. Um, so but anyhow, how this is how it looks like. And what we simply do now in order to get that normalization process uh, quite easy is we, we um, sort the values. So we sort them simply by, by, by value. Um, and then we get a, a chart like this. And now we are more or less done. Uh, this is something um, I know. don't know a better name for that. Uh, I call this always a pseudo histogram. I know that it is not mathematically correct, but I have no idea how to call that kind of chart here. But it's something like a histogram. And we can directly say <laughs> where we have to set our um, separation values in order to get our three classes. Uh, you remember that uh, I mentioned we have 6,500 data points. So the um, 
if I simply go here to 2000, what is it, 2166, um, that would be around here. Then I know exactly what value I have to apply as the separator for my limit for the threshold for the first class. So it would be around 1.2% um, about. And then I go one third further here, then I'm maybe about here. And um, so at uh, 4,300 um, uh, 300 something, and that would be 2%. So we have exactly those separator values in order to define our three ATR classes. And that's all. And the same we do for um, the EMA slope. So finally, doing so and getting those um, separators is what I have done here. Uh, let me quickly show you. I have exactly done what I uh, have done before in the other uh, Excel sheet. I get those two limit values um, here. Uh, this is 1.2%, 1.9%, .2 and those make sure those limit those threshold values make sure that in each class we have exactly one third of our data points um, same for the ema um, and let's have a look to the distribution of the ema uh, one we mark here as well um, of course we find more values which are positive than values which are negative why the answer is simply simple. Um, ducks in average goes north, and that's exactly reflected uh, by the distribution here as well. So um, don't wonder that so we have um, about two third of our um, values positive and only one third uh, here negative, which, by the way, means that uh, one separator limit here is around zero. Uh, in this case. Okay, we have done this and now it comes up that we create those classes. <laughs> and, um, that's simply comparing the actual value of um, the indicator, the ATR. We compare that value with our two limit values here and then we can assign those classes like 0, 1 and 2. Let me scroll down here a little bit. So in this case, we have, for example, values, um, ATR values, which are low. And you see 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. And those we now call the ATR class zero. Um, if ATR values went up, then uh, now we have it. Uh, we are in the middle class here, the medium one with one, and so on and so forth. The same we do with our um, values for EMA. So we do the same kind of logic uh, that we get those three numbers, 0, 1, 2. So we have the subclasses ATR, the subclasses EMA slope, and finally, we want to create what I call here the class ID. Um, and that class ID is created by uh, a simple formula. Uh, we, need, we take one of those ATR, for example, multiply it with three, and then plus the other one. What does it mean? We get exactly our nine different values. In my case, it would be the numbers between zero and eight, and we know exactly if we have a class called seven, then it must be high value for slope EMA, and it must be a medium value for ATR. That means we get exactly our nine different um, fields within our matrix, and we have a single number for every class. Um, in this case, it's uh, 9 because 3 times 3 uh, is, of course, 9. And now we go one step further. What we do now 
And that's already a little bit um, bigger here. Let me first zoom out a little bit. What we now ask ourselves, if we look into the different classes, we know what kind of um, what kind of change we have on that specific day. So if you lo look here in detail, what I have done is I look to the previous day, M17, compared with the class number, and in this case, the class number has been a four, and then I look to the next day, the, the today day, so to say, um, what change do I have within the day? And the change with change, I simply mean uh, close minus uh, open uh, divided by open in order to have a percentage value. So, or even easier to say, is it a long day or a short day? So I get those changes assigned to the right class. And then what I've done further, I have accumulated, I have um, built up something like an equity curve of a single class. So um, let's describe it within the chart and maybe you focus yourself first here on the green line and um, be patient. Um, I have a more impressive example later uh, in my, my next uh, sheet when I change the ATR um, period and the EMA period. Um, but here, because in order to visualize everything, I have to use those high values of periods, uh, because otherwise we would only see noise. But within that noise is much more information than, than you expect. But back to the chart. Look to the green line. If that green line goes more or less strictly upwards, what does it mean? That means that class number seven is a perfect candidate candidate for long trades. That's all. So if we have class number seven, we should trade long. That's the meaning of that kind of equity curve. Because in on average, we have had long moves exactly following today's with class number seven. Same for class number zero. A little bit different is, is the story for class number eight, because the violet one here is a little bit more going south. What does it mean? Going south? Okay, no problem. Um, we can change uh, the slope of the equity simply by um, going for short trades. And that would mean class number eight would have preference to be traded short. And you see already here directly uh, the red one, one, and uh, that yellow one, two, are perfect candidates to say, don't trade. Don't trade at all. Be flat. Because we don't have any, any advantage, uh, any um, probability edge into one direction. If we sum up the right classes with the right sign, and sign means short or long, we get an equity which looks like this. Not that bad for those simple rules. All we do is we use the two indicators. We have our nine classes and we know in what class we should trade how. And the answer finally is in within that kind of matrix. So, and here you find exactly what we have had done directly out of the chart, at least a, a few elements here. Um, if we have a negative slope and a high value of ATR, we should trade short. There are a couple of classes which should be not traded at all, so B flat, and a few cases which should be traded long. Well, most of them are um, long trades. And of course, we find those one with low values of ATR, um, flat slope or positive slope, that are the one 
which should be traded long. I know that that um, equity out of those combined classes is not that good. But that was just an example of with um, fantasy numbers for EMA 200 and the ATR period of 120 I used here. My my gut feeling was to say mm, I need a little bit smaller one, even if the charts are uh, seem to be more noisy. Maybe it will improve my results. So let's have a look here to ATR um, ATR um, 22 and an EMA of 50. Um, ATR 22 has a little bit of a meaning uh, like um, 22 is more or less exactly one month because we have about 22 working days a month. Um, so that was the reason to go for 22 because I haven't done any optimization here. I simply use those numbers which let's say I like. And the rest is simply done by 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 applying uh, math, nothing else. We separate everything, um, and that was only the normalization process. And now our classes become much more obvious here, and you see a very fine and good uh, short class now, um, which is not anymore uh, the class number eight. Uh, it's now class number four, which should be traded short, and you can clearly identify with your eye which class we should put into our basket. Uh, of course, it will be the red one, uh, the one. Uh, of course, it will be the um, dark green one here, class number three. Um, we would not trade at class number six, uh, the even more dark um, green here. Um, so if we put, we combine those kind of results, we finally end up with an equity which looks like this. The absolute number we get here, that is the sum of all um, uh, relative uh, changes, is still about in total a three, um, which is a gain of 300%. Um, it's not that bad because have in mind, we have not done any optimization. It was simply by applying that concept of class separation, looking to is there any preference within one class and preference means long, short or flat and that's all. So there's no real optimization being done and still we have already quite impressive results. So Think about, we go even further down the road. We can use smaller time frames, which gives us more statistics. Here we have 6,500. If we go, for example, for age one data, we, for about 10 years, we have uh, 80,000 data, then it might be a good idea to have more subclasses or even more indicators in order to to get a better separation between the different faces situations of the market or if we further go down the road to m5 uh, then 10 years would end up with about 1 uh, million um, candles and uh, then we might go for three indicators with five subclasses which finally ends up in, in 125 um, class IDs, which will be analyzed separately. And then we get our, um, our rules for those specific situations. And to apply the same rules in the future, it's not complicated. We simply go for the chart. We look for the same kind of indicators. We know uh, how to to um, derive the subclass uh, for each indicator and then we know 
we look into our metrics and see how to trade. In this case, with uh, ATR22 and um, EMA50, the matrix, matrix would look like this one here. And for me, in principle, it's astonishing that we have exactly in the middle uh, now our short trades. Um, but I don't question that because it's a pure outcome of our analysis. So why not? Um, now we would um, completely stay out of the market whenever volatility is uh, extremely high, um, which is something I like intuitively. So um, I like exactly that kind of outcome here. And why not use that kind of information for our trading activities? So what does it mean? Finally, that is a, the, the table and uh, same table um, you find um, within the slides as well. So here back in the webinar and what I have done here as well, um, I put the values for the separation um, on the slide as well. So those numbers uh, which are used in order to get our three equal distributed um, values and for slope and uh, ATR and the matrix uh, itself is seen here as well. A few remarks additionally here. One, the, the shown equity uh, on my, my last slide um, has in principle no stop loss and no take profit. So in this case, all the trades have been opened at open and closed at close of market. That's all. Um, of course, we can do it much more intelligent um, in using stop loss, using take profits, but that is some further optimization which is uh, still to be done here in order to get that strategy as a strictly rule-based rule strategy. Still, and I just want to emphasize that, we can use that kind of metrics already for intraday trading. If we identify in which class we are today, which means we look for the close value of yesterday and the indicator values of yesterday, and then we know what to do uh, today, we can use that information of long day, short day, or flat day for our intraday uh, trading purposes. That means we do trading, but we have a bias in a certain direction. And that already can enhance our trading results quite well. So that is another possibility to use uh, those informations. Um, that this can really be, be upgraded to much more and um, smaller time frames. Uh, just an example, because that is something we put on live um, now uh, exactly where we are. Um, here we are um, on, on Friday. Um, there was a test phase for that kind of strategy for a little bit, uh, yeah, about half a year, a little bit more than half a year. Um, and uh, that's a strategy which is quite similar to what we do uh, uh, have done here today for, for DAX. Uh, here it has been applied to Forex values, but on M5 base. And you see the trading results here um, for that kind of account. And of course, we have drawdowns, uh, no questions. No question here that you have uh, drawdowns still in your trading activities. But the result, mm, I think, is not that bad. Um, and therefore, we decided to put that originally demo strategy now on live uh, since uh, Friday last week. Uh, but that period is really uh, too too short in order to uh, to judge anything. Um, I can show you the results, but uh, it does not have real um, meaning. So right now it looks like this, <laughs> but uh, there's only um, three, uh, four days of uh, trading. So uh, still it's better to compare um, or to, to have a view here on uh, this one, which is... Uh, 
a longer history and really, really lots of trades. You see uh, trades per day here is uh, about 70 trades per day uh, and that's at uh, 150 days. So you can multiply those numbers. So the statistics behind that equity uh, is quite huge. Um, yeah, so and therefore a decision is made and the concept behind is absolutely the same we discuss here today uh, for DAX Vola trading. And I hope, and that's already my summary for today, um, that you you have learned a little bit more that market faces can be really identified and separated via those classes. Um, and we can use indicators, whatever kind, in order to, to create um, yeah, a measurement of the market situation with respect to those indicators. And if we, we uh, use those that class concept, then we have finally a set of classes which we analyze independently and separately in order to find out what kind of trading philosophy we should apply to a specific class. And with philosophy, I mean, finally, uh, stop loss values in percent, for example, risk reward ratios, and so on and so forth. And they, those rules are assigned to the specific class and will be applied for the future as well. So. That is how we can build up a strategy. We can use a simple one like DAX Waller Trading um, as presented in detail today here. But um, the concept is uh, quite good for uh, other underlyings um, and other kind of uh, indicator combinations. Yeah, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy that kind of webinars, a little bit more methodology, not only the trading strategy itself in the focus that you finally have a recipe like uh, if that, then that, and do that. It's a little bit more of how to come to those conclusions and how to do it by your own as well. So if you are have interest in um, slides, Excel sheets, so slides you can already download directly here, but any uh, if you want to have those Excel sheets. Unfortunately, I cannot upload them here because um, there are only, there are limits or restrictions for document types I can upload and uh, Excel sheets um, are excluded. Um, so just send me an email. You know my email address, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And um, I will uh, answer as soon as possible as I can. Normally, it takes, um, let's say, half a day. Uh, so tomorrow until lunchtime, you should have your answers. That's from my end. I uh, wish you a pleasant day or evening, um, wherever you are. And um, see you soon in two weeks, the next webinar from my end. And uh, my colleagues do a lot of other webinars all around the day. You know and you find out at uh, JFT Brokers. Okay, bye-bye.